Hello everybody and welcome to a YouTube exclusive video here on I Wish You Were Dead, a podcast about things that used to be alive. I am your host Gavin and this week we are doing a tier list of all of the state fossils here in the United States. Uh, our last two episodes, uh, last week and the week before, were just going through them alphabetically, but today we're actually going to rank them uh, as, as a tier list here. And uh, if you listen to those episodes, you'll probably get an idea, like nothing here should really surprise you, uh, about uh, where I rank some of these things. But I think this will be a really good uh, experience anyway, just because you'll actually be able to get an idea of what the animals look like uh, that I was talking about, instead of just, you know, words, if you aren't already familiar with whatever group of animals, or I guess in a couple of case, cases, plants, uh, that I was talking about. So uh, you'll be able to actually sort of see them, not just listen to me describe them. And before we get started, just a quick disclaimer, all of these pictures I got off of Wikipedia. Uh, ideally, no one will copyright claim me, uh, but if I were to put all of the sources and links to them uh, in the description of this video, the I don't think it would all fit legitimately because URLs take up a lot of space and you're only allowed so many characters in a, in a YouTube description. So um, I did not take any of these pictures myself. So none of these are mine. Uh, I got them off of uh, Wikipedia with a couple of exceptions, uh, which I will think about and hopefully mention when they come up. So we're going to be going through them alphabetically like we did in the episode. So first up we have Alabama and Alabama, uh, their state fossil is uh, Bacillosaurus, a, a species found here in North America, which is a, an extinct type of whale. And as you can tell here by its teeth, it is a predatory whale, not a, uh, a baleen whale, something like a, a blue whale or a, uh, a humpback whale. So. Bazillosaurus, super cool. It has Saurus in its name, uh, which most people probably know means lizard or something to that effect, uh, because it, it's so long and snaky when they first found it, when it was first named, they only had part of the body and they thought it was a Mosasaur, a type of reptile. And so they named it Bazillosaurus. Turns out it's a whale. So uh, Bazillosaurus is super cool because it is, at, when it was around, was more than likely the largest animal on the planet. None of the really big whales had really uh, come around yet, and this thing was probably upward of, you know, 50 feet long or so. So, um, this to me is an easy, easy S tier. Uh, it's gonna be way up at the top. Next up, we have the state fossil of Alaska, and uh, if we have duplicates, I'm just gonna do them at the same time. So it's also the terrestrial state fossil of Vermont. And that was the woolly mammoth. Woolly mammoths are really cool. I don't think they need to be super explained. Um, I'll talk a bit more about mammoths in general when we talk about another kind of mammoth, because other states have uh, different types of mammoths as their state fossils, but um, I, I think I ranked this a little lower, just because that's kind of basic. Uh, the two that have it, you know, like I said, Alaska and Vermont, they're known to be, even today, snowy and cold places, so uh, they it's fitting for a woolly mammoth, which, you know, back when they were around... You know, Vermont was likely covered in ice. I'm kind of surprised that we even have uh, any woolly mammoth fossils. They must have been living there right before they went extinct. Um, whereas Alaska, I'm sure they hung out for quite a bit longer than they did in the Northeast United States. But I ranked these guys in B tier just because, like I said, kind of basic. Uh, Vermont has another really cool one. Uh, but they're, you know, they're not bad. They're more good than bad, so we'll put them in B tier. Next, we have Arizona's state fossil which is a plant that I don't know particularly how to pronounce, so I'm going to have to look over here to read it. Arorchioxalon arizonicum, which is a petrified wood, uh, very famous from Petrified Forest National Park. Uh, super cool national park. I wish I'd gotten to spend a little more time there. We were there for like an hour as I was driving, um, moving from California to Pennsylvania, and uh, super cool. Like I said, wish I had a lot more time there, but these are big trees. It's not called Petrified Forest for nothing. Um, so that is their state fossil, and I put that in, also in B tier, fairly mid, you know, uh, there's definitely going to be a bit of vertebrate animal bias in this, uh, on my side. Uh, you'll notice that I rank some of the plants a bit lower, and also some invertebrates a bit lower, but there are some S tier invertebrates for sure. Arizona also has a state dinosaur on top of a state fossil, and their state dinosaur is this guy here, which is Sonorosaurus, named after the Sonoran Desert. Uh, in the southern Arizona, northern Mexico sort of area. So, um, this is one of the bigger sauropods, probably around at the time. 
I believe it's related to things like Brachiosaurus, the very famous sauropod, uh, the first dinosaur you actually see in Jurassic Park. Um, and that's that's really cool. I like especially when uh, dinosaurs are named after a local place instead of uh, in recent years, it's been a little bit annoying. People have gotten a little too creative with coming up with scientific names for uh, their, especially dinosaurs, but a lot of the names in general. Uh, maybe that makes me a little old school for not liking them, but I like when they're named after a particular place because it means you can have a little bit of like local pride um, in uh, in your dinosaurs or other things. So I ranked Sonorosaurus an eight here, just because I I quite like Sonorosaurus. Speaking of naming uh, dinosaurs after a a place instead of a uh, you know weird edgy name, uh, here next we have Arkansaurus, uh, the Arkansas state fossil, and here it is a, a theropod dinosaur. Uh, similar to like Gallimimus or those, those other um, potentially more herbivorous or at least omnivorous uh, theropods. And here it is compared to, I don't know why they have her hold her hips like that, uh, but probably a typical woman, you know, probably I think the average female height is like five foot eight, at least in the United States. Um, so a roughly six foot tall, maybe a bit taller than six foot uh, dinosaur. So um, really cool. I had never even heard of Arkansaurus uh, before, uh, you know, prepping for these episodes of the podcast. So I think that's really cool. So Arkansaurus, like Sonorosaurus, is an A-tier. Next, we have the state fossil of the state that I just moved from, California. And uh, it's it's hard to say that this is a bad fossil. Uh, I really like this. This is Smilodon, uh, specifically Smilodon fatalis, the saber-toothed cat. Uh, they are not tigers. They're not more closely related to tigers than any other cat are. In fact, every cat alive today is more closely related to tigers than these guys are. So, um, just a little, I'm a stickler for when people call animals things that they're not. So this is not a tiger, it is a cat. Anywho, uh, these are really famous from the La Brea Tar Pits uh, in Los Angeles. And uh, Smilodon, super cool animal. It's hard to give it anything but S tier. I love Smilodon. Something that I didn't even know while I was living in California was that dinosaurs had been found there. Um, I knew that there were marine rocks from the Mesozoic when dinosaurs were around, but I never knew that dinosaurs had been named. In fact, I believe there was only this one, which is Augustinolophus, uh, which is the state dinosaur of California. So, uh, yeah, I think this was the only named dinosaur fossil. I think there's been bits and pieces found that they're like, oh, it's, it is this kind of dinosaur dinosaur, you know, bigger group, but nothing with an actual scientific name other than Augustinolophus. So, uh, that's pretty cool. I don't believe it's named after a particular place, but I do like it. Uh, I also really enjoy when they give, uh, hadrosaurs this type of duck-billed dinosaur, uh, this vaguely cow coloration, <laughs> because I really think that that's kind of what they were, was just big reptilian cows. So Augustinolophus gets A tier as well, just because uh, I learned a new about a new dinosaur that I, I'd never heard of. I'm sure there are lots of dinosaurs that I've never heard of, but especially one uh, where I lived for a, a decent chunk of my life. Next comes Colorado State Fossil, which uh, I believe they named before other states started doing state dinosaurs, but uh, its state fossil is uh, Stegosaurus, specifically Stegosaurus armatus. Which, uh, if you listen to uh, that episode, episode 83, uh, you'll know is not an actual valid species of Stegosaurus. So, uh, I believe that was even known at the time when they named it. There's a little bit of history there uh, about how this particular species was named. And it gets into a little bit of the complexities of how giving things scientific names works. Uh, I explained it a bit in the episode, so if you are wanting to know more, definitely look at uh, Stegosaurus's uh, Wikipedia page, or uh, for a much less complete <laughs> uh, account of the actual complexities of this particular case, listen to episode 83 of the podcast. Anyway, as much as I enjoy Stegosaurus, um, because that is not a valid species and the Colorado legislature has every opportunity to change it, uh, until they do, it goes in D tier because I don't like a you know, not up-to-date taxonomy. That's what I spent my entire master's project doing was updating somebody else's uh, not up-to-date taxonomy. So it's uh, it's something that I care a lot about for reasons that no one else does. Next, we have the state fossil of both Connecticut and Massachusetts, which is uh, the Eubrontes giganteus ichno genus. 
uh, for these dinosaur footprints, specifically theropod footprints. So I explained this also a bit in episode 83, but uh, if you're not familiar, trace fossils, because you can't really tell what species of, in this example, dinosaur left these footprints, you have to give the footprints themselves their own scientific name. And just for simplicity's sake, we make it in the same sort of pattern as the names we give to, you know, act the actual animals. So these are called Eubrontes. And uh, I've actually been to the site where this probably was taken. Uh, I believe this picture is from Dinosaur uh, State Park in Connecticut. And uh, it's really cool. They have like platforms that you walk over top of them so that you're not walking on the rocks uh, themselves and damaging the footprints. But uh, yeah, they're really cool. And I, I just think it's really neat that a state was like, instead of making the, the fossil itself our state fossil, we make the footprints because that's what the state's really known for. So uh, just because of that kind of unique case, uh, I made it B tier. Um, I like you brown teas, but it is kind of mid, it's on the upper side of like mid tier. Uh, mostly just because of that unique sort of case of uh, them choosing the footprints over the actual animal itself. For their state dinosaur, Connecticut picked the animal that probably actually made those footprints. You know, like I said, it's impossible to really know for sure, but this is the only known large theropod, or at least large enough to make those size footprints uh, from the same time in the area. So likely it was Dilophosaurus. Um, so Dilophosaurus is a, uh, is a much misunderstood by the public dinosaur. It is very famous from Jurassic Park, well known for having the big frill uh, and spitting venom, but uh, neither of those are true to our knowledge. Uh, and there's, it's not one of those things where it's like, oh, it could be true. No, there's literally zero evidence, especially for the venom. There is evidence against it. There are no room in its mouth for like a venom sack or anything. So, um, and also those adaptations just don't make sense for what the movie dinosaur was using them for. Um, I can go off on a whole thing about that, but I feel like that's been beaten to death over the last, uh, uh, however many years, 33 years since, um, no, not quite 30. That's not math. Uh, 29 years since Jurassic Park came out in 1993. So, uh, Dilophosaurus, cool, cool, cool dinosaur. Really like it. So that's also going in the B tier. Um, not bad, but also not, you know, it's not Smilodon. Let's be real. Even though it's not a state, Washington, D.C. has a state fossil. Uh, it is called Capitalsaurus, which uh, I went a bit more into the actual details of this particular fossil in the uh, in the actual episode, the, the first of the two episodes, 83. And so this is a single vertebra that was found within the borders of Washington, D.C. as they were doing some construction. And for a contrived series of reasons, it has never been formally given a name. So whenever you see capital Saurus, it'll be in uh, quotes because it is hard to give a name to something, particularly a dinosaur, off of a single vertebra. Um, with certain other groups of animals like snakes, that tends to happen kind of often. Just because, you know, snakes can be distinguished from one another from, you know, just their backbones. But dinosaurs, not as much. So, uh, because of the whole lore, I guess, of, uh, of Capitalsaurus, it goes in the S tier. Just because I think that's very fun. Washington, D.C. also does a lot of fun things with it. I think there's a Capitalsaurus square or park or something uh, on top of, like, the site where the fossil was found back in, I think, either the, the late 1800s or early 1900s. So... Uh, really cool. Definitely give that a, a Google search. Next, we have Delaware State Fossil, which is Bellumnitella, uh, or Bellumnites, as they're uh, much more commonly called. So this is a uh, shelled cephalopod, a straight shelled cephalopod, or sometimes you'll also hear them called orthocones. Um, so there are a variety of shelled arthropods, or arthropods, cephalopods. Um, there is, I think, one... Group, I think there might be more than one species of shelled nautilus today, um, but there's only one group of them, it's just the chambered nautilus. And uh, but you know, way back in the day, for most of Earth's uh, history, that there's been you know complex animal life, uh, there have been lots of varieties of shelled cephalopods, uh, and this was one of them. So this is one of the more simplistic shelled uh, cephalopods, and this was likely also an internal shell. So imagine a squid. 
how squids have sort of a central rod in the middle called a squid pen. Uh, and they just sort of support the, actual, the mantle, the actual body of, uh, of the squid itself. And so this is likely how that kind of thing might have started, where it did have an actual internal shell uh, that supported the body instead of just the, the weaker rod that squids have today. So belemnite's extremely common. Um, and this one isn't particularly unique to Delaware. So because of that, I, I ranked it kind of lower. It's in C tier, very much middle of the road. Delaware's state dinosaur, however, is Dryptosaurus, which is a fairly good-sized theropod dinosaur. I believe it's an early Tyrannosaurid, so a much earlier distant relative of like Tyrannosaurus rex, and uh, which was very surprising to me because I had not known that these were known from um, particularly Delaware. Delaware is a pretty small state size-wise, and so generally you know smaller area there's just less rocks there to find things from and dinosaurs on the east coast are fairly rare anyway so um it's a cool dinosaur um however mike has a very deep vendetta against uh against the state of delaware so it goes it goes just in b tier which mike probably is gonna say is too high but this is my tier list he's not here there are a couple of states that just kind of phoned in their state fossils and florida is one of them florida's state fossil is agatized coral which is coral uh replaced by silica so after it's been buried for a long time groundwater can flow through uh and it has you know groundwater has lots of dissolved minerals in it and over time as the groundwater just sort of flows through something um some of the minerals dissolved in the water can replace the structure of a fossil and replace it with that mineral. That's very, very common. Um, so in this case, it is coral replaced by silica or quartz. And geologically kind of neat, but I personally know Florida has lots of really cool fossils. So Florida, you really had so many better options. And because of that, you're going in the E tier. Not as basement tier as, as you could be as uh, as the next state, but uh, you definitely could have tried harder. Next state, we have Georgia, who really phoned it in and just picked shark teeth. Not any species in particular, just shark teeth. So, Georgia, you're, you're really... I, I have high hopes for you, Georgia. You have a lot of things going on. Atlanta, from what I've been told... Is a, is a pretty cool city. You have a really cool museum there. I know that for sure. But your state fossil is is very low effort. So basement tier, F, do better. After that comes Idaho. Their state fossil is the horse Equus simplicidens. So it's the same genus as all of our modern horses today. Uh, however, it's really interesting. So like I said, it's from Idaho, uh, but this is actually, so horses today are split into three main groups. The ones are still alive today. There's your horse horses, your zebra horses and your donkey horses. And so even though they're all in the same genus, they're, they're grouped separately, evolutionarily. And so this horse in particular, even though it was found in Idaho, is actually in the zebra group, which is really neat. Um, so I, just for that fun fact, and also horse fossils in North America that are, you know, old, kind of surprises people. Uh, people either don't think of North America when they think of horses, or they think they've always been here, but they actually went extinct, and then Europeans brought them back, which is pretty neat. So, uh, for, again, lower reasons, mid-tier. I like I like this uh, little zebra, and there's no reason to think that it wasn't striped to some degree. You know, every modern zebra in that group today is, is striped, so uh, cool little stripey guy running around Idaho. Next, we have arguably my favorite because it's so stinking weird and that would be illinois state fossil the tully monster or tully monstrum gregarium and so you can't actually see it because as much as possible i wanted to include actual pictures of fossils not just uh recreations but um so it is as i described in uh, the actual episode of the podcast sort of long football shaped with like a little paddle tail at the end two stalk eyes and i'll i'll zoom in here two stalk eyes that sort of come out from the body either way. So those are eyes sticking out this way. 
uh, from the head. And then you can see a little bit here, it goes out to a sort of trunk-like grabby arm coming off the face. We have no idea what this thing is. We know it's an animal. That's about it. We have educated guesses, but uh, the jury is very much still out as to what this thing even is, uh, other than it's an animal it's of some kind. Um, and because it's so weird, this gets an easy S tier for me. Uh, I love these weird little guys. They're so fun. If you want to have your mind blown about this little guy, look up Tully Monster and you will get many results. Next, we have Kansas doing some cool things. They have a state flying fossil and a state terrestrial fossil. Their flying fossil is Pteranodon longiceps, uh, which I believe Pteranodon means wing tooth, which is funny because they don't actually have teeth. And then longiceps, I believe, means long fingers, which other than the, the tooth thing makes sense. Um, but Pteranodon, extremely uh, popular uh, pterosaur, uh, especially in uh, you know the central part of the United States. And so they were very big. Its wingspan is somewhere in the vicinity of 20 feet or so. So big animals flying around. And uh, one of the better known pterosaurs as well. We have a lot of specimens, given that it's a pterosaur and their bones tend to be pretty fragile. So uh, Pteranodon, really cool. You are going in A tier just because you're very famous. And uh, also just credit to Kansas for having uh, two. Well, two differentiated ones anyway. A couple states later on cheap by having two, but Kansas does has, has two state fossils the right way. Kansas's other fossil is its state marine fossil, and uh, that is Tylosaurus kansensis. Uh, there are several species of Tylosaurus, but this is a Mosasaur, uh, sort of like what they thought Basilosaurus way back from the beginning, uh, what they originally thought Basilosaurus was. And uh, Tylosaurus is one of the bigger genera of uh, mosasaurs, with the bigger species potentially being up to 60 feet long. This is one of the smaller species, but um, is named after Canada, or Canada, Kansas. So that's cool. Um, and because, I also don't know why this one is like, I think the only PNG that I found uh, of a fossil, which if you work in a museum and you have to be one of like the four people to watch this, um, please take pictures that turn out to be PNGs. It makes everyone's life a lot easier. And so, uh, because Tylosaurus is real cool, you also go in S tier. I really like Tylosaurus and Mosasaurus in general. I believe that's the only Mosasaur actually on this list too. And I know lots of states have them, so do better states. Next, we have the wonderful state of Kentucky, who also has some really cool fossils. However, they named the entire phylum of brachiopods as their state fossil. Um, moving on. Like, at least pick a particular species. Come on, Kentucky. I also apparently skipped over Indiana, uh, whose state fossil is Mammut Americanum, uh, as well as Michigan's. It's also Michigan's, too. So, um, Mammut Americanum, as uh, much as it sounds like that's a mammoth, it's not. It is actually a mastodon. So, uh, the American Mastodon is really cool. Related to elephants, as you can see down here, but they uh, are, they, they branched off from actual elephants, you know, the kind that we have today, which mammoths are uh, a member of, actually, in the elephant family. Um, but Mastodon split off quite a while before, and their teeth are very different. Um, they, you know, Mastodons tended to be browsers, so they ate things like leaves and twigs, whereas elephants are grazers and ate mostly grass, and their teeth are very different because of that. And so, uh, Mastodons, pretty cool. Uh, I like Mastodons. And, uh, so because of that, Indiana and Michigan, they sort of go in, uh, middle tier. I don't know why it's way over there, but, um, that's for editing Gavin to figure out later. Next up's Louisiana with the fossilized plant, Palmoxalon. Is that what that is? Is that what that's called? Yes, Palmoxalon. That's what it is. So, uh, it is a fossilized palm, if you couldn't get that by the by the genus. Uh, however, palms are not true trees. That's a misnomer. They're not at true trees because it's not technically wood that they're made out of. Uh, semantics, I know. But um, according to Fia, uh, she thinks it should be something marine. So, uh, I ranked it mid-tier because of that. Palms are pretty cool. Uh, they're a really old group of, uh, I almost called them trees, of plants uh, compared to things like true trees or, um, or at least angiosperms most of the plants that you're thinking of that aren't pine trees which are actual trees um 
But yeah, Louisiana, apparently you could do better, but I don't know enough about you to uh, to say. Next up is Maine with their state fossil, uh, Pertica quadrifaria, which if I remember correctly is a very early large plant. Uh, very early, I guess, vascular plant. Um, I guess those, those can be, those are different, but can be true at the same time. So I think, obviously, this looks very much like a tree. Um, I doubt that it was woody in the same way that we would think of, um, you know, like a large woody tree today. Uh, however, it is still main. <laughs> I don't know what else to say about it. Um, and like, I don't mean that to be derogatory toward Maine, but I don't know how else you're going to take it. So to the four people in Maine, uh, it's a B, you know, better than mid tier, better than Louisiana's palm. So even though they're neither are trees, this one's at least old and therefore kind of cool. Next, we have Maine's state fossil, which is Echphora gardneri gardneri, which is interesting. It is a gastropod, so a snail. Um, it is interesting to me because it has, they named the subspecies. And as I mentioned in the episode, subspecies isn't a thing that tends to happen with uh, with fossil species. That's kind of unusual. Um, I know very little about gastropods. To say what this could be related to today um probably something i don't know like i said i'm not i have no idea so uh but because it's a subspecies and kind of like i said unique and kind of interesting i put it c tier otherwise it probably would have been d tier um but maryland's doing some interesting things with their fossils because they also have their state dinosaur which is astrodon um which i believe means star tooth which i don't think is a reference to its actual teeth um if I had to guess, and I didn't actually look this up, but I would guess that it was, um, there's a big, um, I think NASA has its headquarters in Maryland. Uh, so I actually have, uh, my, one of my friend's brothers works there, funnily enough. Anywho, um, that's what I would guess is that it was found in the nearby area. I know for a fact fossils have been found, like, on the premises of NASA's, uh, <laughs> Uh, headquarters in Maryland, but uh, Astrodon, really cool, very much like Sonorosaurus, is the, in that uh, it's related, or at least in the same group, as uh, like Brachiosaurus, so uh, pretty good job, Maryland. You're you're going in the uh, in the B tier. So we already did Massachusetts's Massachusetts's? Massachusetts state fossil, which was uh, this Eubrontes uh, fossil footprints, but they also have a state dinosaur, which is Podokisaurus holiocensis, uh, which is really neat i i really like especially because i think this is a fairly early dinosaur if i remember correctly like early time wise um so i like when they show theropods like this even earlier ones with feathers because that is now how we understand you know how they looked um but i also really like it because it uh is named after holyoke massachusetts and again i like like i said i like uh when when fossils are named after a place so good on you massachusetts so a tier for you Man, there are a lot of states that start with M, including Minnesota, uh, who I think just this year, 2022, uh, passed legislation saying that Castoroides, this giant fossil beaver, is uh, is their state fossil. And I remember Fia during the episode saying, uh, beavers have some giant teeth, and that is absolutely true. Uh, these are giant. I said that they were roughly the size of a banana. Uh, I believe that that's true, especially when they're together like this, like uh, beavers have their teeth, but uh, giant beaver, plus Castoroides is just really neat. Um, it's it's just kind of a trope that everything was bigger in the Pleistocene, which is when these guys lived, uh, which is during the Ice Age. A tier for you, Castoroides. Uh, I, I like, I just like beavers in general. They're just big, wacky, weird rodents, and uh, they're really fun, so giant Ice Age beaver, A tier, for sure. Just like Alabama, Mississippi also has a fossil whale for their uh, state fossil. Depending on where you look, it will either just say fossil whale or it will specify this genus, Zygoriza. And uh, very much like I put Alabama's, that's absolutely uh, an easy A tier for me. Fossil whales, especially the big predatory ones, are really cool. Um, actually, if I bring that back up, you can see that's a manatee and it's probably three times the length of a manatee, and manatees are not small. Manatees are quite big. So, uh, easy A tier for me, or uh, S tier even. This isn't really a great picture of what it actually would have looked like when it was alive, but 
things that are free to use in YouTube videos like this. Uh, you can only ask for so much, but this is Missouri's state fossil, which is uh, Delocrinus missouriensis, which is a crinoid, uh, effectively a sea star. You know, well, most people would call a starfish, but they're not fish, so I don't like using that uh, term. But a sea star, instead of up, instead of on the seafloor like this, sort of flipped upside down and then had a stalk, so they would be up off of the seafloor. Um, they had lots of arms coming off, but this is the calyx, which is sort of the main central part of the body. Um, uh, like I said, there's definitely going to be a vertebrate animal bias, and uh, it's an invertebrate. Sorry, Fia. Uh, but C tier for you. Missouri also has a state dinosaur, and this is a lower tier one for reasons that I'm going to explain. It's nothing to do with the actual animal itself. I'm sure the animal's fine. Um, but it goes in E tier because it was the single picture on Wikipedia that I was not allowed to use, which makes me very confused how it's on Wikipedia anyway. But apparently, most countries, uh, you are allowed to use, if you, say you take a picture of some famous building or famous sculpture or something, uh, you can use that, you know, you took the picture, so you can use that in whatever you want. In the United States, that's not the case. Um, there was a very nice statue made at a museum in Missouri of this animal. However, Wik Wikipedia was very quick to inform me that, hey, you cannot use this um, because this is not because of this weird way the United States copyright law works. Um, if you take a picture of a statue, you are not the copyright holder of that picture. Uh, it is the the copyright still belongs to whoever made that statue, um, which is really interesting. I believe it's called the panorama something, something panorama. Um, and so for various reasons, you go in E tier because you just made me sad. Anywho, Likely a much cooler uh, hadrosaur dinosaur is Montana's state fossil, which is Myasaura, uh, the mother lizard. So you can see this, uh, you know, mounted fossil here as, long, as well as uh, this little model of what it might have looked like. It's sort of in the same pose. And so uh, Myasaura being very famous for being found with piles and piles of eggs. Um, other dinosaurs have been found with eggs too. That's these days fairly... I'm not going to say common, but not uncommon, at least. And so, um, with other dinosaurs, like Oviraptor, it was initially thought that Oviraptor was stealing the eggs, but we now know that, no, it was probably its own nest, and it was over top of them uh, to sort of protect them from probably like a dust storm that ended up burying them and fossilizing them. Uh, Myasaura, that's definitely not the case, because these are uh, definitely herbivorous. So, uh, Myasaura, pretty cool. Uh, B tier. I like Mysaur. Next we have Nebraska, which puts in less effort than some other states, but more than like Florida or Georgia. So they just named the genus Mammuthus, which is the genus of mammoths proper, uh, not Mammut, which is the Mastodons. And so they just named that whole genus, but there's lots of species in that genus. So there's the Uwuli Mammoth, the Colombian Mammoth, uh, the, there's several species of Pygmy Mammoths. Uh, there's steppe mammoths, so they didn't specify. I would assume they would either mean woolly mammoth or Colombian mammoth, just based on, you know, geography. The woolly ones tended to be more in the north. The Colombian ones tend tended to be more in the south. Kansas, during the Ice Age, was kind of middle of the road, so it was probably one of those two. But for lack of effort, did I say Kansas? I meant Nebraska. Uh, Nebraska also goes in E tier for lack of effort. Sorry, Nebraska. Nevada, on the other hand, has a real cool state fossil, which is Shonisaurus. Uh, in particular, uh, I think Shonisaurus popularis, which is the smaller of the two species. And even still, being the smaller of the species, its head is, I believe this horse is closer to the camera in this picture than, uh, than, than the actual big ichthyosaur is. And so even still, its head is as long as this horse. This is a big old animal. Uh, you know, probably getting up to, I think the number, I just listened back to the episode today, it was like 14 meters, which is huge. Uh, the bigger of the two species could be like 20 meters, which is like 70 feet. So, uh, Shonisaurus, real cool. Potentially the largest swimming reptile ever. So, uh, easy S tier for me. I love, I love me some aquatic reptiles. If you had asked me what group of dinosaurs would be the most common state fossils before I did the prep work for these episodes, I would not have said hadrosaurs, but here we are. 
because uh, New Jersey's state fossil is Hadrosaurus, the one that gives the group Hadrosaurus its name. Um, similar to what I said with Delaware, finding them in a relatively small state, like area-wise, as well as uh, you know a state on the east coast, or particularly in the northeast, is very uncommon. So uh, Hadrosaurus, interesting, but you know mid-tier. I like Myasaur better because it's at least known for something um, other than just being one of the first ones. So uh, Myasaur better than Hadrosaurus. Hot take, maybe? Next up is New Mexico, and they have Coelophysis as their uh, as their state fossil, which is really cool. Like I said, I really like early dinosaurs. Uh, some of the earliest ones are just, A, we have some of the least information about them, so I just think that inherently makes them a little mysterious. But Coelophysis is one of the uh, first known you know, uh, very famous, uh, especially theropod dinosaurs. It's, uh, I think, got most of an episode featured to it, to uh, Walking with Dinosaurs, the, the uh, documentary series back in, I think, 1999 or 2000 or so. Um, so I really like Coelophysis. It's pretty cool. So because of that, it goes B tier. Not crazy, nothing super special, but better than average. We have a little bit of extreme bias in this, uh, this particular fossil, because uh, it's New York. My, my good old home state, not where I currently live, but my, my home state. And so our uh, state fossil is Eurypterus remipes, which is a Eurypterid, a sea scorpion. So uh, they were a little bit hard to, they're hard to describe if you don't already know what it is. Because you say scorpion and people have an idea in their mind. And these, like I said, are vaguely scorpion shaped. Uh, this is much more of a swimming variety. Uh, they had these paddles up front, but some of them instead had claws instead of these paddles, uh, as well as obviously they have legs you can't particularly see, but most of them had this uh, very slender end to their body. Some of uh, the more predatory species had that barbed that I think we've found evidence of them using that to like attack their prey with. So it's also similar to scorpions in that sense, but because I'm very biased, that's S tier. And uh, you're not gonna question me on it because I love New York state, even though it does a lot of things very wrong. Um, and that, but that's also a cool fossil, so it probably would have been at least B tier anyway, so. It's my list, I'll do what I want. North Carolina, uh, decided to go big and picked Otodus Megalodon as their state fossil. This is what Georgia wanted to do, but didn't have the courage. I actually don't even know when Megalodon was formally named or when we really got a handle on, you know, what it could have looked like or anything, so I... Maybe it's a little harsh on Georgia, but probably not too much. But anyway, Megalodon, super cool shark. But because it's a little overhyped, I put it in A tier instead of S tier. This one I think is a little underrated. This is North Dakota's state fossil, which is Torito wood, which as I explained uh, in the episode, is wood, fossilized wood that has these boreholes in it from what I thought was a worm, but as we actually learned in real time uh, during the episode, is actually a bivalve, uh, a relative of clams that... Uh, uses its shell to sort of just wiggle back and forth a little bit, but it'll drill into the wood if it does it often enough. And so it's it's more the traces than the actual wood itself that's the fossil. So because that's unique and really cool and I think underrated, A tier. Ohio has two state fossils. They have a state fish fossil, which is this cool guy. You can get a good picture of it in the back there, which is Dunkleosteus. Uh, Dunkleosteus is a placoderm or armored fish, as you might be able to tell. Um, Really cool group of fish, very metal looking. Um, I Placoderms are such a cool group of animals. And there's these days it's looking like a better than not chance that uh, the group of fish that we tetrapods came from, came from these guys. So to think that this is our great times, several hundred million grandpa could be, that'd be pretty cool. And because of that, S tier for sure. I loved Uncle Osteus. However, like I said, uh, Ohio also has a state invertebrate fossil, which is Isotelus maximus. So uh, Isotelus, I believe, is the biggest ge uh, genus of trilobites, and uh, they're really cool. They are, I think this one is roughly a foot long, which for trilobites is very large. Uh, I believe the biggest species of Isotelus could be upward of two feet long, um, which, again, for trilobites is insane uh, and they're fairly early trilobites as well i believe somewhere in the early devonian 
And so these were some of the biggest things in the ocean. And uh, that's, that's pretty cool, in my opinion, for just these little, and they're fairly primitive uh, in terms of trilobites. They don't have a lot of the more advanced features of some of the other groups. So um, I like trilobites mid-tier, you know, nothing too crazy. They could have picked uh, a couple different uh, invertebrate fossils for their invert, but um, definitely could have been worse. Now we get to the first big cheater, which is Oklahoma with its state fossil, which is a dinosaur. Nothing inherently wrong with that yet, uh, but their state fossil is Sorophaganax, which is uh, a relative of Allosaurus. So, but a bit bigger than Allosaurus, big, like sort of uh, more heavily built. And so really cool, excellent name as well. That's one name that like I mentioned before, some of them that are like a little too edgy for me, but Sorophaganax is is cool. That's just objectively really cool. So, uh, A tier for you. The reason Oklahoma cheats is because they have a state dinosaur as well, which is Acrocanthosaurus, which uh, is another fairly big sized theropod. So, they could have picked two that were, you know, I know that there are sauropods known, I know that there are lots of other um, cool dinosaurs known, but they picked two big edgy theropods for their state fossil and state dinosaur, so uh, they get a little less credit. And so Acrocanthosaurus goes in B tier because I'm a little salty. Oregon's up next, and their state fossil is, they also kind of cheat because they picked a genus that is still alive. They didn't even specify a species as well, which is meh. Um, but yeah, they picked a genus that is still alive, which is this guy here, which is Metasequoia. Um, Believe it or not, sequoias themselves are not in this genus. I believe they're in the genus Sequoia dendron, which means sequoia tree. Um, and unlike palms, they are actual trees. Uh, so are these guys. So they are related to those giant sequoias. But um, Oregon, because you didn't pick a genus or you didn't pick a species. And uh, yeah, do better. Be more specific. Oregon, so you go in D tier with the unresolved taxonomy of the Colorado Stegosaurus. Now to my current state that I live in, Pennsylvania. Uh, they get ranked pretty low, but this is Eldridgeops, more commonly known as Phacops, I guess formerly known as Phacops rana. So I, I know the type of trilobite like that Isotelus. This is one of the more advanced groups of trilobites, but because they also haven't updated their taxonomy, you go in D tier. That's, that's D tier is for the cool fossil, update it and it'll get bumped up a couple tiers but um pennsylvania legislature do better next up we have south carolina and also washington state uh their state fossil is both the columbian mammoth and south carolina you are one of the best known states for things like whales so what are you doing like it's a it's cool i like columbian mammoth it's probably one of the bigger mammoth species um which would make it one of the bigger elephant you know relative species so e tier mostly because both of those states could have picked something more interesting but they went the easy route and picked a mammoth because everybody likes mammoths well not here not today so e tier pick a different fossil after that comes south dakota with its state fossil and also its wyoming's state dinosaur but this is Triceratops. Uh, South Dakota specifies that it's Triceratops horridus, which is the, the later of, the, I, think, I believe, the two species of Triceratops, one that's commonly uh, associated with fighting T-Rex. Um, but Wyoming just says the genus Triceratops. But uh, it's really cool. As I mentioned in the episode, the museum that I worked at in South Dakota when I lived there had the actual specific uh, specimen that the South Dakota legislature designated uh, on display. So I've actually seen it. I've, you know, cleaned it and dusted it off and stuff. So that's pretty cool. I'm a little biased. S tier. Earlier in this video, I asked for more state legislatures or more, more states or I, what did I even ask for? Something, whoever puts pictures on Wikipedia to do more like, uh, Kansas's Mosasaur did up here and make it a PNG. This one just went the complete wrong direction, made it green instead. But anyway, this is Tennessee's state fossil, which is Taro Trigonia. Thoracica. Yep, that's I, I read that correctly, I think. And so this is some kind of bivalve. Fia looked it up and it said it looks spirally, which is unusual for a bivalve. Um, but obviously it's not completely spirally because bivalves need to have two 
shells. That's why they're called bivalves. Um, so mid tier, you know, nothing great about it. I think it's an interesting bivalve. I've never particularly seen one like that. So, um, but Tennessee has lots of other cool fossils that they didn't know they had until after they passed this. So I guess I'll, that, that probably should be in B tier just for the benefit of the doubt, but we'll move it on. All right, we're getting toward the, the end of the list now, but here we have Texas, which excellent name for a dinosaur, but they named it as their state dinosaur, even though they don't have a state fossil. That's the only state I believe to do that. And they named a very incomplete specimen. So Sorrel Poseidon, again, excellent name. What, probably my favorite extinct species name. Um, but we only know it from these four neck vertebra, vertebrae. And so, cool fossil. Maybe find a little more of it. Invest in science, Texas. Um, I know that's something that your legislators are not particularly fond of. Um, but invest in science. Go out, find some more of this guy. And maybe I'll actually enjoy it as your state fossil. Um, if there were more of it, that'd be an easy S tier for me. But as it stands, B tier. Now we have Utah's state fossil, who also cheats in the same way that uh, Oklahoma does, but uh, their state fossil is Allosaurus fragilis, extremely famous theropod dinosaur from the uh, Jurassic period. Um, don't know what else to say about Allosaurus. Like I said, sort of the quintessential uh, Jurassic theropod. So uh, super cool. You're going in B tier because of that. I, I like Allosaurus, but it is a little bit overhyped. Uh, not nearly as cool as Utah's state dinosaur, which is Utah raptor, which is one of the bigger species of dromaeosaurs, uh, which are the sort of raptor dinosaurs. The species is named after, uh, obviously, Utah raptor, and you have to say of Utah, but the species name is actually named after uh, John Ostrom, who gave the scientific name to Deinonychus, which, and he, he was one of the first really big proponents of... Uh, the relation between dinosaurs and birds, which is really cool. So, uh, because of that, it's named after a place. So I like that. So it goes a little bit higher than Allosaurus. So you go in A tier. We mentioned earlier that Vermont has a state terrestrial fossil in the woolly mammoth, but they also have a state marine fossil in the beluga whale, which is pretty cool. Uh, they used to live there when uh, you know sea levels were a bit higher, and uh, the Great Lakes, you know, the the river that drains the Great Lakes into the ocean. Uh, was a little more flooded than it is today and they could make it all the way up the river but obviously they no longer do which is really sad i grew up on that river and uh, i wish that i'd grown up seeing beluga whales but unfortunately that's that's not true so a tier for you plus beluga whales are just super cool i like beluga whales a lot after that comes virginia's state fossil which is chesapectin uh these scallops chesapectin uh, i think jeffersonius so unfortunately it's named after thomas jefferson which is pretty sad uh but Chesapectin is an extremely good pun off of Chesapeake on one hand and pectin, which is, uh, you know, pectinidae, I think is the family that scallops belong to. And so that's just an excellent pun. I like that a lot. So that makes up a bit for the, the being named after Thomas Jefferson. So B tier for you, better than average. West Virginia's, you know, fossil picture uh, had a nice handy drawing of this thing shown in the same pose as uh, the actual mounted skeleton but uh, it is a ground sloth called megalonyx jeffersonii also named after thomas jefferson sadly um but ground sloths super cool this was on the smaller side of ground sloths so uh roughly cow sized or just big 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 bear as we talked about in uh, uh in the actual podcast episode so you go in a tier because ground sloths super cool um if you were one of the bigger ones s tier for sure um but ground slots in general, real cool. Good, definitely good enough for A tier. I don't even particularly know how to pronounce Wisconsin's state fossil, as I mentioned in the podcast episode, but it's Calimene Celebra. Calebra? Not entirely sure. Some of, C's and E's kind of trip me up when talk, like speaking Latinized versions of uh, Scientific names, especially Greek, I don't really know how to pronounce them. Anywho, it's a trilobite, much like uh, Isotelus or uh, Eldrotops. And so, it goes vaguely in the same tier as them. Um, but the taxonomy on it, I think, is actually up to date, unlike uh, Eldrotops here from Pennsylvania. So, it gets a tier up from that. And lastly, which thank God, because it is extremely hot in this room right now, 
um, is Wyoming's state fossil. We already did their state dinosaur in Triceratops, but their state fossil is this uh, species of fish called Nitea. They are extremely commonly preserved nearly perfectly like this. We can see basically every bone in the body. Um, love this little fish. And because of the preservation quality, I, I wish it was, you know, a little more exciting of a fish, but C tier, middle of the road. And lo, we now have the official state fossil tier list. If you question me, uh, you're wrong. I'm totally kidding. If you have thoughts on what state fossils should be where, which ones are trashed, which ones are awesome, Gavin, you know, t tell me which of my opinions are, are trash. Tell me down below in the comments. Make sure to check out the actual podcast uh, subscription wherever you listen to your fine podcast. Please make sure to follow us on uh, Twitter and Facebook as well if you have those uh, social medias. That really helps with the podcast, and it's a really great way to interact with us and help the podcast grow completely for free. It is really hot in this room right now, and I need to end this recording. So, thank you very much for watching, uh, and I will see you all next YouTube Extra.